Hey there, Al Joseph here. Today I'm going to be showing you six methods that have helped me alleviate tension and cramping in that fretting hand, as well as more rehabilitation methods that help me avoid injury and even come back from injury in that fretting hand. But before we do that, I want you to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one, and also hit that bell icon for more notifications. Today I'm playing into one of my favorite Kiesel guitars here. This is a Kiesel Theos, and it's rocking a maple cap with that beautiful lavender burst. We have a chambered mahogany body with a roasted one-piece maple neck, as well as a roasted bird's eye maple fretboard. This guitar comes loaded with Kiesel Lithium humbucker pickups, and I'll be plugging into Neural DSP's Mesa Boogie Mark II C Plus, as well as Neural DSP's Archetype Tim Henson plugin. Let's get started. So I've found that there are three things that can vastly affect my playing ability, the dexterity on the guitar. And the first one is posture. Having good posture can definitely set you up for success and ease on the guitar. I get a lot of comments all the time, Al, you play with such ease, what's going on? Well, the first thing is going to be posture. Now, you may have heard of these two types of posture, and you may have seen a lot of my videos online where I'm playing with more of a natural, standard sort of posture. You just wanna make sure that your back is straight. I try to make sure that my back is straight at all times. Um, I tend to hunch over like this, and it causes a lot of back problems, it causes a lot of injury, and it can affect the duration of my practice routine as well. So if I'm not getting those repetitions in, then I'm definitely impeding my progress. Lately, I've found that once I get around this 12th fret area here, um, my hand starts to run into the, to my side here, and I actually start to uh, rotate my shoulder okay now this has actually caused a few shoulder issues and back issues in my playing so i've been trying the classical posture okay and that's where you sit it on your left leg here and i really like this because if i go ahead and take my guitar off right I end up being able to sit pretty straight, pretty standard, right? As long as I'm scooted up to the edge of the seat here, I like to do that just to make sure my back is, my lower back is straight and I'm not putting any strain on it. And sitting that guitar on the left leg here, okay? Now, what I found here is that before my arm even hits my the left side of my body, I'm already at the 24th fret, and that is pretty optimal for me. So I've been trying that as of late, but see what works for you. There is no wrong answer. I will say as long as that your back is straight, you can see enough of the guitar, and you're able to develop proper muscle memory and get around the neck with ease. Now, the second thing I realized that I had to fix was my hand grip because I found that I wasn't getting as much dexterity on the fretboard. I wasn't able to get further reaches to hit more intervals. And it was just impeding me and, and cramping up my hands and just really not allowing me to play for long periods of time. So I get that request of a lot. So hand grip is super important. I call this the baseball mitt grip. And really what I'm going for here is a nice, relaxed, palm. That is the main area of focus here. I don't want any tension building up in the palms here. So it's almost like you're catching a ball, right? You wouldn't catch it like this or like this, right? You would catch your ball, a ball with an open hand, right? So what I try to do is first get that thumb in the middle here of the neck, just keeping it in the middle of the neck. We're not sliding down like so or choking up. Now for bends and things of that nature, it's totally okay. But when you're playing elaborate lines, it's going to suit you, I would say, or it suited me uh, well to keep that right in the middle of the fretboard. Another thing is watching the knuckles of the hand as well. So you've got a knuckle here, a knuckle here, in the, uh, here on the palm, another one here in the middle of your finger, and another one here just before the tip of your finger. I want to keep that way off the fretboard so I have more leverage on the pads or uh, of the tips of my fingers, okay? So I keep that like so, and I want to try my best. I haven't mastered this completely yet, but I want to try my best to keep the thumb here nice and curved. So if I'm looking at it from this angle here, I have a nice sort of U shape going on as opposed to, you know, um, 
getting my knuckle up there. I want to keep that off the fretboard because once the knuckle comes in, I start pinching in here on my inner palm and that starts to cause tension over time and it decreases the length of time I'm able to play elaborate lines at high speeds, right? So I've really tried to train that in. So let me show you real quick a quick exercise that I've used, super simple. We're just gonna be on the G string here and we're gonna be on the ninth, seventh, and fifth fret, okay? And the pattern's gonna go like so. We're just going to hammer on with our pinky, three, Okay, our pinky's gonna be three, our middle finger's gonna be two, and my pointer finger's gonna be one. So three, one, two, three, two, one. Three, one, two, three, two, one. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this exercise. I like to practice to a metronome and set a timer on it. We're gonna do one minute here, and I'm just gonna be going using subdivisions and time feel to uh, creep up in speed and oscillate between different speeds without having to disrupt the pattern of my routine. This is great for stamina. This is great for speed. This is also great for accuracy and eliminating string noise. This is something that I try to focus on as I practice through. So I'm gonna show you real quick. Now that is a super easy exercise that you can use at whatever speed you want to. If you wanna use BPMs, that's totally fine. I like to use subdivisions because again, it helps me go up and down so that I can focus on the sense of relaxation and just really focusing on the feel in that palm and letting my fingers do all the work. As soon as I get to a higher speed and it starts feeling too much, my hand starts cramping up, I can always kind of eke my my way back down in speed and also this helps me work on my rhythm so that my lines sound a whole lot cleaner my notes sound a whole lot cleaner so that's that benefit there now the third thing I had to fix in my playing along the years was wrist alignment this is super important as far as alleviating tension in the palm in fact I find that the more I focus on keeping my wrist nice and straight not you know forcing it straight but just allowing it to remain straight allows me to also alleviate tension in my palms and thus my fingers remember we want to let the fingers do all the work we want to keep as much of the hands off the fretboard as possible mostly the pads and uh, of in the tips of the fingers and the side of the fingers just for um, string muting situations and all that but you really want the all that to come from the fingers so i'm going to show you this quick arpeggio and it all this will be in the tabs of the pdf and all that, that i'll provide for you as well so you can get the pattern but i'm going to do another minute here on the metronome and just kind of work through this arpeggio and build it up okay this is a great way to warm up and integrate warming up into your playing as well
And those are the three areas that I find cause most of the tension and cramping. Let's get into three more tips for rehabilitation and injury prevention. As far as rehabilitation and avoiding injury is concerned, one of the first things I've learned to do is stretch, especially after I've done a few exercises, I got some blood in the muscle, and now I'm able to stretch out that muscle, okay? Never stretch out or massage cold, always do some exercises beforehand. We wanna focus on that hand grip, the posture, everything that we talked about in the first three sections here as we do this. Now, the way that this works is, is that we're gonna crab walk down the fretboard. Pointer finger is gonna be on the A string seventh fret. The middle finger is going to be on the D string eighth fret. The ring finger is gonna be on the G string ninth fret, and the pinky is gonna be on the B string 10th fret, okay? I pulled this from John Petrucci's Rock Discipline DVD. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out. I definitely cut my teeth on that one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this. Okay, this is a dissonant chord. We're gonna switch the two middle fingers where the ring finger is now on the D string ninth fret and the middle finger is now on the G string eighth fret. And then we're gonna switch the outside fingers there. Okay, so we have switch the middle two, switch the outside, and switch the middle two again back to the original position. We're gonna do the same thing by moving down the pointer finger. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit harder to stretch and keep that uh, thumb curved with this, but that's still the idea. And really, we're just letting that thumb lean up against the fretboard. We're not squeezing, okay? Try not to squeeze. Then we're gonna move down the middle finger, all right, thumb adjacent to the middle finger, always. Move down the ring finger, okay? And then we end up with the pinky going down and then now we're back to the original position but we're fret down lower, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna do this without a metronome this time around, okay? And just go at my own pace but you can do it to a metronome if you would like or do it to a backing track, what have you. I'm just gonna try to cra crab walk all the way down as far as I possibly can. Let's see if I can get to the first fret. Starting on the seventh fret here. Your finger again. Okay. Uh, middle finger. Ring finger. again. Middle finger. Sorry. And then the ring finger. Ring 
finger. Pinky. Let's see how far I can go. Pointer. Middle. Woo! Starting to feel it now. Okay, this is exactly why you should warm up first before you stretch. Ring. Pinky. So we're back to second fret here. Pointer. Okay. Middle. Woo. It's making me sweat. Ring. Woof. And finally, the pinky finger. All right, so there you have it. That is the stretching exercise. We're gonna get into some massaging in a second. Uh, that's gonna be the next point of that rehabilitation or, um, you know, just getting your hands more prepared to do more for longer periods of time. Um, but there you have it right there. Now you may have seen in the third camera there, um, you know, I said to avoid to be bending the thumb like that, but at certain stretches, it's just impossible to avoid. But that is the framework. So make sure to keep that in mind with what you can do so that you can get more dexterity between those fingers. For the next rehabilitation method, this has a lot to do with massaging and stretching, okay? Your muscles need to be stretched out and massaged every single day. Don't overdo it, but the key here is to make sure that you're warmed up. If you went through this whole video and you're working this into your routine, you're already warmed up and ready to go into your actual heavy focused, intense routine. And that's what I do pretty much every day. So I'm gonna put my guitar down here. Usually I'm kind of walking around the, the house here um, and just pushing up through the palms here. We're gonna work from the fingers and palms to the wrist, to the forearm, bicep, deltoids here, your shoulder, and also your pectoral muscles here. Okay, I'm gonna try not to hit this microphone. So anyway, just, I work from the outside around the pinky. You have this big muscle here on the outside of your pinky. A lot of you guys have heard you're having pinky issues. So definitely gonna hit that. Moving on through the palm, up through the ring finger, up through the middle finger getting that big old thumb muscle up and through the pointer finger. Nice stretch here, okay? Never stretch cold. Make sure you warm up first, okay? So the hands are feeling nice and limber. The wrist, okay? Gonna let those fingers relax. I know this seems super weird, but uh, if you want to last very long, if you want to have longevity in your playing, this is something that must be done. You got to take care of your body, okay? So the bottom of the wrist through the elbow, all right? And then also on the top here, this muscle here, okay? The bicep, okay? Up through the deltoid here of the shoulder, massage that. And then I like to come back through here of the ch uh, through the chest muscle as well, okay? Again, try not to hit that mic, all right? I'm only gonna do this side, but let me tell you something. If you do that every single day, getting the back over top, 
leaning over, get a nice stretch in that lower back. I'm going to do the side too, since we're using both sides of our back most of the time. And then I'll work my way back down this way as well. So this is incredibly important to my routine. I do it every day. I'll say it again. Never do this cold. Warm up first, grab the guitar, do some exercises first, and then walk around and stretch your body out and get limber. And last but not least, make sure to take breaks, all right? I run into this problem all the time. I end up doing my full workout and then I wanna go into playing and rehearsing my songs and then I wonder why I have problems, okay? Make sure to take breaks. Take effective breaks in between exercises if you have to. I like to take breaks in between the set of techniques and exercises that I have for a specific technique. So I'll go into a heavy legato session and then I'll take a 10 minute break. After that, I'll come back and do my sweeping, take a 10 minute break. And then I'll go ahead and do my alternate picking, right? And then take a break, right? And I'll take an even longer break then uh, in between that and my practice session. So my practice session goes technique one, do all those exercises. Technique two, do all those exercises. Technique three, do all those exercises, taking breaks in between all of those. I'll take an even longer break, like say a half an hour to an hour, and then I'll get into actually playing my songs or jamming or whatever you like to do for fun. That's just a little bit of a golden nugget there. Taking breaks can definitely add longevity to your playing and help you avoid carpal tunnel and injury and all that sort of thing. And as for a final bonus tip here, get the proper coaching that you need. Maybe you need someone to watch you and walk you through and make sure you're doing things the proper way. I know what it's like trying to do this alone and I'm telling you there's nothing like having somebody there to coach you through, to hold you accountable to these things so that you can actually win over time and not end up stuck in that intermediate rut for the rest of your life. Right now I've got a mentorship program set up called the Ultimate Guitar Performer mastermind group. This is a group of guys and me where I'm just helping them individually work on their playing and increase and skyrocket their results like never before. It's not too late to start and get yourself set up the proper way. I've had mentors in my life and I'm here to extend that to you. So if you want to check that out, that'll be down there in the description. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks, as well as hit that bell icon for more notifications. And until next time, shred happily.